Hello, and welcome to First United Methodist Church, Mason City, Iowa. Today I've chosen a Lenten hymn to focus on the life of Christ. It's from our Methodist hymnal, the section Christ's Gracious Life, chronicling his life from birth to the resurrection. And it's a song that was particularly special to me because it's my teenage years, my college years, when I became familiar with the song, Lord of the Dance. Lord of the Dance by Sidney Carter. It's in our hymnal on page 261. Verse 1, I danced in the morning when the world was begun, and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun. And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. At Bethlehem I had my birth. And the refrain, dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. It's one we used to do when I was at Luther College, late 60s, early 70s, and going out on a mission team group with guitars and a number of us that would sing and trying to bring contemporary worship to primarily Lutheran churches since it was a Luther, Luther college, but uh, I think we did do a couple of Methodist churches also. And we, would, we incorporated this song once in a while into our, our medley of, of hymns. Upon his death on March 13, 2004, at the age of 88, Sidney Bertram Carter's obituary in the London Daily Telegraph began with the bold assertion, Lord of the Dance was the most celebrated religious song of the 20th century. Now this statement deserves further examination. Lord of the Dance, written in 1962, captured the spirit of the 1960s protest movement in the United States. It became a sacred equivalent for songs by Pete Seeger in the late 1950s, including Where Have All the Flowers Gone and To Everything Turn, later made even more popular by Peter, Paul, and Mary, as well as Bob Dylan's Blown in the Wind. And we used to perform all of those. While the direct, even for some sacrilegious language accompanied by the folk acoustic guitar bordered on heresy for some. For others, these songs were a breath of fresh air. Lord of the Dance brought this sound and spirit into the church, especially in services designed to reach young people. Born in 1915, Carter was educated at Oxford and he taught high school in the 1940s. Sympathizing with the Quakers, he served in an ambulance unit with the Society of Friends during World War II. Carter began composing songs in the 1950s and 1960s, many of which remain very popular in the schools of Great Britain to this day. Called a carol by Carter, Lord of the Dance was not the first song on this theme. Tomorrow Will Be My Dancing Day, a 17th century English carol, provided an obvious model for this famous hymn. An earlier medieval carol also explored the allegory of the dance as a metaphor for humanity's relationship with Christ. Carter adapted a melody from the Shaker dance tune, Simple Gifts. Carter's Green Print for Song, published in 1974, suggests that he wrote the words first and then adapted the tune of Simple Gifts to the text later. Simple Gifts has been identified as a quintessential American folk tune by composer Aaron Copland, who quoted the tune as the climax of his famous symphonic work, Appalachian Spring, in 1944. A favorite of youth groups in the 1960s and 1970s, Lord of the Dance spread far beyond the Christian community, partially because the song never mentions Jesus or Christ by name. Its most famous use beyond the church is as a Celtic dance for Michael Flatley's world-famous show, Lord of the Dance. The origins of the tune are not Celtic, however, but thoroughly American. Always the iconoclast, Carter's theological perspective may not pass all tests of orthodoxy. The opening lines of this first-person account of Christ's life 
have been thought by some to contain a hint of paganism, which, mixed with Christianity, makes it attractive to those of ambiguous religious beliefs, or none at all. While inspired by the life of Jesus, Carter implied that the Hindu god Shiva as Nataraja, Shiva's dancing pose, a statue that sat on his desk, also played a role in the song's conception. The choice of an adapted shaker tune for the melody, sometimes called the Shaking Quakers, who were known for their vigorous dancing during their rituals, rounds out the dance theme. Carter acknowledged the theological contradictions, but never attempted to resolve them. He notes, I see Christ as the incarnation of the piper who is calling us. He dances that shape and pattern which is at the heart of our reality. By Christ, I mean not only Jesus. In other times and places, other planets, there may be other lords of the dance. But Jesus is the one I know of first and best. I sing of the dancing pattern in the life and words of Jesus. The second stanza mentions that the scribes and Pharisees would not join in with the dance. But the fishermen, James and John, did continue with the dance with the dancer. The third stanza goes, I danced on the Sabbath when I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me high. And they left me there on a cross to die. The fourth stanza has one of those turns of phrases that are typical of many folk-based songs. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. A bit shocking for those who have grown up with Abide With Me yet offering a different perspective on this central narrative in the Christian experience. Verse 4, I danced on a Friday and the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone. But I am the dance and I still go on. The final stanza captures the untainted joy of the resurrection where the dance is complete and all are invited. I'll live in you if you live in me. Carter placed the primary emphasis on faith rather than creeds or theology. He asserts, faith is more basic than language or theology. Later, he continues this idea. Scriptures and creeds may come to seem incredible, but faith will still go dancing on. Lord of the Dance almost did not appear in the United Methodist Hymnal. It was the only hymn not included in the original report of the Hymnal Revision Committee to the 1988 General Conference of the Methodist Church when they were doing our hymnal as we know it today. Bishop Woody W. White influenced its edition at the last minute when he used this song as the theme of his sermon preached at the opening service of the conference. Alzheimer's disease began to take a toll on Carter by 1999. He was lovingly cared for by his second wife, Lila Nair, until his death. A friend, Rabbi Lionel Blue, commented after a visit, our only contact is a thin thread of memory and his songs. I start singing them and he joyfully joins in and I leave him as he continues singing. One of the last things that Carter was able to do as he lived out his life. So I'd like to play on the piano, Lord of the Dance, and sing the first and last verses. in the morning when the sun has begun and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun and I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth at Bethlehem I had my birth dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance said he and I'll lead you all wherever you may be Cut me down and I leapt up high. I 
am the life that'll never, never die. I'll live in you if you'll live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance then, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all, wherever you may be. And I'll lead you all, in the dance, said